Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be starting a new video series called How to Blog. Basically, I am going to be showing you how, as a blogger on chess.com, I make my blog posts. I have a variety of different types of blog posts, for example, book recommendations, guides for improvement, end game studies, general advice, and more. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how I write a typical end game study post. For instance, if we look at study number 20 right here, we see I have a little title. It's usually kind of catchy. Then I have um, a short introduction. I have the puzzle. Then I have scroll down for hints. Basically, there are two hints, a small hint and a big hint. Obviously, the small hint is for those who get it a bit more than those who need the big hint, but you can scroll down to see them. As you can see here, I have the small hint, and then if you scroll down more, I have the big hint. And at the end, I have a little thank you message or some extra information, stuff like that. So in today's episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how I would write a typical blog post for Endgame Studies. And without further ado, let's get started. <music> Alright, so now we're in my blog, and I'm just going to create a new post with this green button on the right. I'm going to click on it and wait for it to load. Alright, so hopefully you should see a screen that says new blog post here. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my post title at the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter my um, title, which is endgame study number 25. And... Um, I'm going to call it Rooks Don't Matter. I've already looked at the endgame study, so I already know what it's like, and I think Rooks Don't Matter is a good title for the endgame study. You guys can decide later down in the comments section if you think Rooks Don't Matter is a good name for this puzzle that I'm about to enter. Okay, so now we're going to go into the actual text of the blog. So normally I just write an intro here, but for um, this... Um, Time's sake, I already wrote it and I copied and pasted it in here. So basically that is my introduction, my welcome, hi, this is what this post is about. And now I click enter and then I want to go into these little um, boxes here, these little buttons and find this one that looks like a chessboard. It says insert chess game or diagram. That's what you want to click if you want to insert a game, a puzzle, an endgame study, anything of that sort on chess.com. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to set up position. I'm going to use this trash can button to clear the board. And now I'm going to simply set up the position. So it's a very simple position. I wanted to choose a simple one for this video so it wouldn't take up too much of your time. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And it is white to move. That's something you want to check. And then you want to scroll down in this diagram like editor thing and you click on theme and you want to check this puzzle box. If you don't check it, it just ends up as a diagram with all of the analysis just there. If you check it, your readers have to solve the puzzle by making the correct moves and then they unlock the rest of the analysis. Okay, so now I'm going to go to moves. I'm going to enter into moves. So the first move is rook e6 which I'm going to give two exclamation marks because, as you can see in the title of my blog post, it says rooks don't matter, and this endgame study clearly shows that. We're giving up our rook in order to win the game. Okay, so now that um, I've commented on that move, black basically has to take, and that is part of the solution. Now white plays queen to a6 check, and black basically has to go to d5, because if he goes to d7, we simply win the queen. And I'm going to give that the white is winning symbol. Okay, so again, when you go to theme and you check that puzzle box, what it does is basically that the reader has to go through all of the mainline moves before they can see the rest of the variations and all the comments and all the annotations and all that. Okay, so black goes king d5, and here we have a very simple three-move combo to win the queen, and we've got it. Okay, 
And that is the end of the puzzle. So once they find queen takes g7, they will see all of the rest of the analysis. Okay. So now I'm just going to insert the study. And it shows up as this kind of generic diagram like image on chess.com. Basically, if you click on save and preview, you will be able to see what it's like. We'll get to that later. So for now, I'm going to just insert my hints. And because um, this was like an easier endgame study, an easier puzzle, I'm only going to give one hint versus when I normally give both a small hint and a big hint for those who need varying degrees of help. So I'm going to say scroll down for only hint. And then you see the thing about chess.com is if you want to tab a bunch of times or create new lines a bunch of times, you can't just hit enter a bunch of times. That doesn't work. Chess.com kind of like, like gets the idea that you're spamming that button, you're creating a bunch of new lines, and it deletes most of them and only creates one. It only leaves one. So what you have to do is you have to hit enter and then hit space. So now chess.com sees there's actually a character on that line, which is the space that we just entered. So if you do this about 15, 16 times, something like that, I lose track all the time, it doesn't really matter. Basically, you just want it very far down the page. Now I'm gonna put hint, and what should the hint be? The hint will be, um, try to win black's queen with a skewer, because indeed, that is how we win the queen in this puzzle. And now I'm just gonna quickly write my um, thank you message. Thank you for reading this blog post. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. See you next time. Okay? And that's basically it. So I have a title, I have my blog post, I have the puzzle. Now, the only thing I would have to do is insert an image up here. You can see under the title. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not actually going to insert an image in this video, but all you got to do is download an image and upload it. Um, so now, before I publish, because I technically I'm done, but before I publish, I'm going to click on Save and Preview. This way, I can just see what does my blog look like before I publish it, okay? So I see, good, we have our intro message, we have our welcome message, um, we have our title, that's all good, and here we have our puzzle. As you can see, it says white to move, and we have to find the correct move. So we know the answer, so we're just going to input it and make sure that it's all correct. And you can see that once I solve it, I unlock all of the analysis, all of the comments, and all of the annotations. So that's why you have to go to theme and check that puzzle box, okay? So now I'm going to scroll down for the hint, make sure it's good. So the basic idea I like to do is it has to be at least one page apart. That way you can't accidentally scroll down and see it. So now I scroll down, I see the hint, and it is try to win black's queen with a skewer. And then I have my thank you message. It's all good. So here is where I would hit publish, but um, for, I, I don't really need to do that for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make a blog post and show you guys how to insert puzzles, insert endgame studies, whatever you like. Um, if you did like this video, make sure to subscribe. Hit that like button and turn on notifications to see my next video. And I guess I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.